Omnamo Narayanaya, welcome back to the second video as we read through the Narada Bhakti Sutra or the Sri Bhakti Sutra. We're picking up today with verse 25, if you should be reading along. Devotional service is better than fruitive work, that being karma, speculative knowledge, jhana, and mystic yoga. Devotional service is itself the benediction attained by the devotee. For this reason, it is better than karma, jhana, or yoga. Devotional service is better because it makes the devotees humble. Whereas in karma, jhana, and yoga bring pride to the karmis, jhanis, and yogis. The Supreme Personality of Godhead likes humility and hates pride. For this reason, devotional service is better than karma, jhana, or yoga. Now, some philosophers think that devotional service is attained only by cultivating speculative knowledge. Others philosophers think that by cultivating speculative knowledge, devotional service is attained. And by cultivating devotional service, one makes progress in speculative knowledge. The sons of Lord Brahma, Narada and the four Kumaras, teach that devotional service is only the only means of attaining devotional service. By practicing devotional service, one attains devotional service. That devotional service is attained only by practicing devotional service may be understood from various examples, such as the example of the king's palace in the example of the meal. Knowledge of the location of the king's palace does not bring the king's pleasure on the knower, nor does the knowledge of the food satisfy hunger. Only something beyond passive knowledge will bring the king's pleasure or the satisfaction of hunger. From this example, it may be understood that passive knowledge is not sufficient to bring liberation. Those who desire liberation should accept the path of devotional service. The saintly teachers, Archayas, have described the means by which one attains devotional service. Devotional service is attained by renouncing the object of sense gratification and renouncing association with worldly-minded non-devotees. Devotional service is attained by undeterred, constant worship and service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Even in this material world, devotional service is attained by hearing and glorifying the transcendental qualities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Devotional service is attained by the mercy of the pure devotee, or by a drop of mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. These are the two most important ways to obtain devotional service. Association with pure devotees is very rare and difficult to attain. The association is a very powerful method of attaining devotional service. By the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, association with a pure devotee is attained. The pure devotee is always in harmony with the wishes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They are never in disagreement. For this reason, association with a pure devotee is a very powerful method of attaining devotional service. For this reason, we should associate with pure devotees. Association with non-devotees should be completely abandoned. One should renounce association with non-devotees because their association is the cause of lust, bewilderment, destruction of memory, destruction of intelligence, and destruction of all other virtues and advantages. Although these evils may be only small waves in the beginning, by continued association with non-devotees, they become like great oceans. Who crosses the illusionary potency, that being Maya? One who abandons association with non-devotees, serves the devotees of the Lord, and remains free from material possessiveness, crosses beyond the influence of Maya. One who does not live with non-devotees, who uproots the bondage of materialism, who becomes free from the influence of the three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance, and who gives up the thought of his own material benefit, crosses beyond the influence of Maya. One who renounces the fruits of his own work, gives up all material activities, and becomes free from material duality, crosses beyond the influence of Maya. One who rejects the material piety taught in the four Vedas, and instead develops unbroken love for the Supreme Personality alone, crosses beyond the influence of Maya. He crosses beyond. 
the influence of Maya. He makes the people in general also cross the influence of Maya. And we shall pause here. There's a few things I want to comment about this, opening the conversation to you, of course. Uh, verse 49 says, One who rejects the material piety taught in the four Vedas and instead develops unbroken love for the Supreme Personality crosses the influence of Maya. This is a very interesting phrase. It's easy to gloss over. It's not saying one who each, he checks, rejects the piety of the Vedas. No, no, the Vedas are great. It's saying the material piety. Not everyone who worships the Vedas is doing so correctly. Not everyone who worships or follows or promotes the Vedas is honorable. It even kind of says this earlier on. It says, um, verse 39, association with pure devotees is very rare and difficult to attain. Essentially, uh, using some Christian terminology, it says ministers of the cloth who are supposed to be promoting the wisdom of the holy books, yeah, may not be doing so. Essentially, there is piety that is very materialistic that is based on the Vedas, but it's not really true. And there are devotees of the Lord who, yeah, maybe aren't pure. Maybe they have issues. Maybe they're not really teachers. Maybe they're egomaniacs. They're not humble, which goes back to another verse. So you should be humble. There's a lot of non-humble teachers out there where they started out and then they changed and their ego just blew up. And that I see more than anything. And eh, it's human nature. You kind of can understand how that happens. Not begrudging someone whose ego blew up because they achieved what they wanted or they feel like they're doing God's work. But this text is saying that that is not a pure devotee. And not all ministers, preachers, pastors, whatever you want to call them, swamis, are pure. It's a very, it's a very interesting thing here. There was one thing, though, I kind of disagree with. It says, um, association with non-devotees should be completely abandoned. Good luck living in the modern world. Seriously, you will have to grow all your own food. But where are you going to buy the seeds? From the market with non-devotees. So you're going to have to associate with non-devotees. You can raise animals, but are you going to butcher your own cow? Well, no, you're not going to eat cows, so let's say what else? Be sheep? No, you're not going to eat meat. You're going to be a vegetarian, right? If you actually follow this. So you're going to grow all your own food, but again, where are you going to get the seeds? You're going to have to go to the market, but you're going to need money or maybe trading, but where are you going to get the money? You're going to need someone to give you money. Also, you're going to pay taxes. You're going to need electricity and running water, and that's going to have... There is no way you can truly live in the modern world and have no association with a non-devotee you can't do it unless you live somewhere with no electricity, no running water, and you literally make all your own clothing from the material you've gotten off of your own sheep, but you didn't buy the sheep from a non-devotee. So at some point, you have to. So I totally disagree with this. I think even monks and monasteries are associating with non-monks just to survive. Uh, there's a monastery... Uh, not a monastery, a nunnery uh, here in Portland, Maine, that actually is closed now because it needed money to survive and it didn't have any. And its, it's you know, body was just decreasing. People don't want to become nuns anymore. So it needed money. Who was going to give it the money? Well, Non-nuns, non-devotees, non not necessarily pure people. You can't, so even they were stuck. If they had cut themselves off, well, they had to... doesn't work. So I don't believe this line is right. I do believe it is right when it says, if you associate with these people, you'll pick up their bad habits. Because I think bad habits dominate good habits. I think bad habits are stronger, you know. It's like a thunderstorm. The sun is bright, but the thunderstorm still can take over and roll out. Bad habits can dominate and hurt you. And even if you put up a wall, I speak from experience living with people with bad habits, it wears you down. I, I lived with an alcoholic, liar, cheater, um, you name it, she did it, stole money, um, everything. And I had to eventually put up such a brick wall that I basically treated her like a piece of dirt. 
I wasn't, I was basically mean to her at all times because every time I was nice, I would get stabbed, figuratively stabbed. Oh, I'm being nice to you. Okay. And that for her was permission to literally steal my credit card and now give me a hundred dollar credit card bill on top of the other times she stole it. So I couldn't be, I had to be like, yes, what do you want? Yes. And it felt, it makes me feel bad in hindsight because there were times I didn't need to be, but I had to be to survive because she was tearing me down. And so even if you put up the walls to make sure you're not taking over, it tears you down. So I got that. I got that. It takes a strong person to keep things away. But to not associate with her would have been better, but no one's perfect, so I don't think we can do that. I just... Yeah. This is my one little thing in this. The modern world doesn't allow people to be alone. Even the Amish circulate with non-Amish. You know? Unless you live on an island. But... I don't know. Anyways, that's just my thoughts. Just um, putting it out there. Oh, one more thing I wanted to say. It talks about in the beginning what different philosophers think, like devotional service is attained by only practicing devotional service, or it's practicing by knowledge. I actually think that all of those above are correct. I will speak personally, as I always do, that devotional service for me has come and gone over the years, but like I pick up a book and I start reading this book, and that kind of gets me back into it. So cultivating this knowledge actually has been really good for me. And there was times when I veered away to a different spiritual path, like a new age thing, which is so easy to be influenced by. And I would read a book about the science of Hinduism. I'm like, oh my God, this is the most scientific religion out there. And that speculative knowledge pulled me back to it. So I actually think that these things are all good. We shouldn't just pray, pray, pray. I did that once and uh, for quite a long time and it didn't click for me. I, you know, where you're, where you're even surrounding yourself with murtis of the guru and it just, it didn't click at the end of the day when I had a problem. It wasn't like enough. Or I honored the guru, you should say, up to a, up to a level. So I think actually a little bit of everything is, is what is important. But that's me. That's just responding in this text off the cuff. Haven't read this. First time I've read this. So um, opening the door to you, getting the conversation rolling. Would love to hear your thoughts or anything else. And uh, yeah, like, comment, um, not like, <laughs> or uh, uh, criticize me or the text or whatever. Be my guest. Any any feedback is welcome. We are reading these texts to grow and to learn and to share and to also praise the Lord and all sorts of different ideas bubbling up. Essentially, this channel is about speculative knowledge, I just realized. That's okay. It's okay. So, thanks for watching. Harry Krishna, Harry Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Harry Harry, Harry Rama, Harry Rama, Rama Rama, Harry Harry.